Hello again, everyone. Um, again, this is uh, Kurt coming to you from um, Rockville, Maryland. There was a woodpecker outside. I've got the windows open, but can't hear it now. Um, So I want to talk about um, a teacher named um, Joshu. Uh, so Joshu was a, um, a Chinese uh, a teacher who lived during the, the Tang Dynasty. But actually, before I talk about Joshu, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, someone else, um, an earlier uh, teacher in China named Dao Sheng, who um, lived uh, during the time when, uh, during an earlier time when, when Buddhism was still much um, younger than it was in uh, Joshu's time, several centuries earlier, maybe around four or 500 AD. Um, and Dao Sheng was part of the project of uh, translating um, sutras, the teachings of the Buddha. Da, this is Dao Sheng. Da, Dao Sheng was, was a translator, so he was part of the project of, of uh, taking the, <clears throat> uh, the teachings of the Buddha written down in Sanskrit and translating them into Chinese. And um, one of the uh, sutras that had not yet been translated at that time was the um, the Mahayana Parinirvana Sutra, which is a real mouthful, right? Mahayana Parinirvana Sutra. <laughs> Say it with me, everyone. Mahayana Parinirvana Sutra, um, and it's it's often just referred to um, as the Nirvana Sutra, and it's this it's a sutra that recounts the final days of. Uh, the Buddha, Shakyamuni Buddha, uh, up to and including uh, when he died. Um, and uh, there's a story that's told in that sutra about uh, Ananda and Shakyamuni Buddha um, <clears throat> walking along together one day. And uh, Ananda saw a uh, a woman who is obviously in great distress and and um, Ananda asked the Buddha to go help her. And the Buddha said, there's there's nothing I can do for her. And and Ananda was a little taken aback by this um, and kept urging the, the Buddha to um, to do something for her. Um, and this is one of the, uh, this happens in a few places in the, in the stories uh, from the Buddha's life that Ananda and Buddha would get into arguments, <laughs> or at least they would have a disagreement. And uh, uh, eventually the, the Buddha said to Ananda, uh, she is an Ichantika, and there's nothing I can do for her. And so Ichantika is a Sanskrit word uh, that literally it means uh, someone who is um, a very limited capacity for learning. Um, but so this was this so this this story this part of the sutra the Mahayana Parinirvana Sutra is very long, um, and. Uh, uh, this this sutra this story uh, was translated uh, into Chinese um, before the whole sutra was translated, and when the when the partial translate translation was made publicly available, um, it had uh, the Buddha uh, saying to Ananda that the woman in question the woman who was suffering and that, the, and that the Ananda wanted the Buddha to help, but the Buddha was saying that he couldn't help. Um, it, it had the Buddha saying that she had no Buddha nature. 
and therefore she she could not be helped by the Buddha. And so to everyone's uh, uh, shock and uh, amazement, uh, Dao Sheng uh, made a point of saying that uh, this was not correct, that all beings have Buddha nature, and, and therefore um, this, this woman in the story had Buddha nature. And so he got into trouble for this. Um, and uh, eventually, uh, he basically he was told, you know, to stop causing trouble, to stop disagreeing with the teachings of the Buddha. Um, uh, and he kept saying, well, you know, that's not the teaching of the Buddha, the teachings of the Buddha is that all beings have Buddha nature. And you know, the other um, higher ups in Chinese Buddhism said, you know, Dao Sheng, it's not your job to tell the Buddha what his teachings are. <laughs> the sutras contain the teachings of the Buddha and it's very clear what it says here. So this went on for a while and eventually um, uh, he was uh, drummed out. Dao Sheng was uh, defrocked uh, and and sent, sent on his way. Um, he was no longer a monk and, and he was forbidden uh, to teach. Um, he was labeled a heretic. <clears throat> uh, and so as, you know, as punishments for heresy go, simply being, you know, um, uh, stripped of your monastic status and uh, being um, forbidden to teach is not so bad, you know, worse things have been done to heretics. Um, and uh, so what Dao Sheng did was, he, you know, he uh, went off, uh, and for <clears throat> a while, um, no one heard of no one heard of him, and so spies were sent <laughs> out to 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 uh, find him and to uh, make sure that he was not um, violating the terms of his you know punishment. And um, they asked around, <clears throat> and uh, some people said, "Oh yeah, Dao Sheng. He he he, uh, he went into you know that forest over there, and no one has seen him since." And so the spies went into the forest, uh, and they and they heard Dao Sheng um, speaking, uh, and so they they. They said, aha, we've caught him. <laughs> you know, he's teaching and he's, he's, he's not supposed to be teaching. It sounds like he's talking to some large group of people. And so they, um, they snuck up on him and they could see him. And there he was, clear as day, standing there talking. And they looked around and they couldn't see anyone. And then Dao Sheng said, uh, the Buddha taught that all beings have Buddha nature. Do you agree with this or not? And when Dao Sheng said this, all of the trees in the forest bowed down. <laughs> and uh, so the spies went back and reported what they had seen. And uh, they all had to agree that Dao Sheng probably wasn't technically violating um, the, um, uh, the terms of his punishment because he was just teaching the trees. So eventually, not too much longer after this, um, the uh, the translation of the Nirvana Sutra was completed. And later on in the Nirvana Sutra, <clears throat> the Buddha clearly says, uh, all beings have Buddha nature. And so when they got to that part, they said, oh, you know, 
looks like Dao Xing was right. <laughs> so they knew where he was. They went and got him. They brought him back. Um, they reinstated him, gave him a promotion even. And in fact, his new title was that he was the official um, teacher in charge of teaching the Nirvana Sutra. <laughs> So now I'll get to Joshu. So uh, a student once asked Joshu, uh, what is my teacher? And Joshu said, clouds rising out of the mountains, streams entering the valley without a sound. And the student said, well, I didn't ask about those things. And Joshu said, uh, though they are your teachers, you do not recognize them. So in the story about Joshu, I mean, the story about Dao Sheng, Dao Sheng is teaching the trees. And, and Unlike a lot of stories that get passed around in, in Buddhism, I should I should point out that the story about Dao Sheng is true. It's well documented. Um, now, the part about all of the trees in the forest bowing down is recorded, but you know we um, we don't necessarily have to um, believe that that's literally true. Although <clears throat> we don't, we shouldn't. Uh, out of hand, just discount it either. Um, anyway, so and also the most of, most of the stories about Joshu, Joshu and Dao Sheng are both um, historically well documented uh, individuals. Uh, we know you know when they lived, uh, where they lived, the people that they had interactions with. Um, So, oh yeah. So this this story about let me let me read the story from um, the recorded sayings of Joshu again. A monk asked Joshu, um, uh, "What is my teacher?" And Joshu said, uh, "Clouds rising out of the mountains, streams entering the valley without a sound." And the student said, "Well, I didn't ask about those things." And Joshu said. Though they are your teacher, you don't recognize them. Hmm, there, there's the woodpecker. You probably couldn't hear it. Um, so in the story about Dao Sheng, Dao Sheng is teaching the trees. In the story from Joshu, Joshu is saying the trees teach us. Yeah, so in the recorded sayings of Joshu, there's quite a few ooh, look at that. Let's see. interesting things that he says. Um, uh, one time a student asked a Joshu, um, what is Buddha? And Joshu pointed to the altar and said, oh, he's right over there. <laughs> it's a big statue of the Buddha on the altar. Uh, another time, a student asked Joshu, um, what is it that you teach? And Joshu said, I don't like to talk about it. And the student said, well, why don't you like to talk about it? And Joshu said, because that is what I teach. So Joshu's name, um, 
well, or his nickname. I'm not sure what Joshu actually means in, in Chinese, but it, it was either the literal meaning of his name or it was a nickname that he had was um, Stone Bridge. And um, his, uh, the, the temple where Joshu lived was, was near a very famous uh, stone bridge in China. Um, and uh, And it was, it was considered to be like, like a, uh, no, one, no one can remember when this bridge had been built. And so uh, some people claimed that it had always been there and it was, and it was considered to be, you know, very, very strong and solid. Uh, and it was famous uh, for uh, how ancient it was and how um, permanent and indestructible it seemed to be. And so uh, one time a student uh, came to Joshu and said, because Joshu was, no, was, was, was known as the stone bridge, the old stone bridge. And uh, so a student, uh, a wandering student who went around, um, uh, you know, in, in, in Zen, sometimes students are, uh, portrayed as uh, um, evaluating teachers instead of the other way around. Um, people who think that they have some insight would go around and um, uh, test teachers to see if they could find one. Well, really the point of that is to, um, usually from the student's point of view, it's you want to find a teacher um, who uh, who you approve of <laughs> and uh, but to some extent what's really going on is uh, the teachers are um, well anyway it's 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 a it's a strange phenomenon that happens in Zen students and teachers testing each other and so the student came to Joshu um, as the first time that they had met and they had an interview and, and the students said to Joshu, um, I've heard about the old stone bridge, but all I see is a rickety wooden, rickety wooden bridge. So by this point, Joshu was very old and frail um, and not particularly impressive looking. Uh, and so the student said, I've heard of this, of the, stone bridge, but all I see is a wooden bridge. And Joshu said, you see the wooden bridge, but you don't see the stone bridge. Yeah. Um, so the idea of Buddha nature is um, a very uh, popular, very attractive. And uh, one of the reasons why the, the story of, of Dao Sheng is uh, so interesting, at least to me, is that it shows that uh, although people who study Zen or um, really any kind of Mahayana Buddhism, um, the idea that uh, all beings have Buddha nature is something that is just taken for granted. And this is really uh, one of the reasons why we have uh, the Koan Mu, which is also a story from Joshu. student once asked Joshu, does a dog have Buddha nature? And Joshu said, Mu. Mu, which is um, the Chinese word, actually, so in, in Mu is the Japanese pronunciation, it's also the Korean pronunciation, but it's the same word in Chinese, <clears throat> which in Mandarin, modern Mandarin, it's pronounced more like Wu. Um, 
But regardless of how you pronounce it, <clears throat> it simply means no or not or without. Um, when when we chant the um, the the Korean version of the Heart Sutra, um, we say mu. I think it's like over twenty times, maybe even maybe yeah. Mu mu myung myung mu mu myung jin. Neji mu no sa yong mu no sa jin mu go jim yo to. Anyway, so we we say we say mu a lot in in the Heart Sutra. Know this, know that. Um, uh, no suffering, no origination, no stopping, no path. That's kind of an important uh, uh, passage in the Heart Sutra because um, uh, suffering, origination, stopping, and path are the Four Noble Truths, the truth of suffering, the truth of the origination of suffering, the truth of the cessation of suffering, and the truth of the path that leads to the cessation of suffering. Suffering, origination, stopping, and path. And yet in the, in the Heart Sutra we say, no suffering, no origination, no stopping, no path. Why? Well, when um, when the student asked Joshu, um, does a dog have Buddha nature? Joshu said, Mu. Why? Um, so any teaching that's put into words is um, limited and partial. Um, <clears throat> and sometimes we go so far as to say that any teaching that's put into words is not uh, is not true. But I, I think that's going a little too far. You know, a finger can point to the moon. The finger can never touch the moon. Finger can never is not the moon. But that doesn't mean that a finger pointing to the moon is not true. Um, as long as we understand that it is just the finger pointing to the moon, as long as we understand that the finger is simply pointing to the moon, uh, then, then, uh, then that is true, completely true. Uh, but if you see a person standing in one place pointing this way, and a person standing in a different place pointing this way, You might say, one finger points this way, and the other finger points this way, which is it? In the Heart Sutra, we also say there is no attainment and nothing to attain. Um, more knows, more moves, right? But we also say that um, all Buddhas attain Anuttara, Samyak, Sambodhi. So which is it? So if you want to see the moon, then you can't fixate on the finger. You have to look what the finger is pointing to. You have to follow the direction um, that the finger is pointing in. But if you want to resolve <clears throat> the contradiction, the apparent contradiction, that one finger points in one direction and another finger points in, an, in a different direction, um, then you look down. Instead of looking out what the finger is pointing to, you look down at the person um, who is pointing and look at where they're standing. And you'll see that one person is standing in one place and the other person is standing in a different place. And so from those different positions, the moon is in a different direction relative to those different people. And so you can say that, well, ultimately, <clears throat> um,
Well, so one, one of the ways of understanding the different positions from which fingers point apparently in different directions, but still pointing to the same thing is that um, sometimes uh, the, um, uh, uh, the teachings are being given in relative terms and sometimes they're being given in uh, ultimate terms. But those are just more more words saying that there are two truths there's the relative truth and the absolute truth it's just more words and really when when joshu says mu to the question of uh does a dog have buddha nature it's not a matter of relative or absolute um you know and this is just so what i'm about to say is just explanation it's not the answer to the koan mu um and as an explanation, it's very limited and should be um, viewed with great suspicion and skepticism. <laughs> Nevertheless, I'm going to say that one way of interpreting what Joshu is doing and his teaching is he's saying, don't ask me. <laughs> uh, f find it for yourself. See it for yourself. Um, so instead of pointing, Joshua is just saying, look up. If you want to see the moon, you've got to look up and see it for yourself. And in fact, if the moon is shining in the, so in the sky, it's, you don't really need someone to point it out to you. You look up. There it is. But if you go around asking people, where is the moon? If you go around asking people, does a dog have Buddha nature? Where is Buddha nature? Um, they can give you all the explanations. You know, and someone can show you pictures of the moon. Someone can show you uh, equations that 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 accurately predict the position of the moon in the sky. Um, you can get an almanac that will uh, uh, tell you uh, what phase the moon is in. But unless you look up, you'll never see it. And if you do look up, you can't help but see it. So when Dao Shang read that someone had, you know, published a partial translation of uh, their nerve of a sutra, with the Buddha saying um, that there is such a thing as uh, uh, beings that don't have Buddha nature. Because he had seen the moon for himself, he knew that it wasn't true. He knew it. And, you know, how did he know it? So when you say, how did he know it? It's like someone going up to Joshu and saying, what is Buddha? Or, you know, uh, does a dog have Buddha nature? Um, if we want to know what Dao Sheng knew, then we have to look up and see it for ourselves. And people can point it out to us, people can describe it to us. Um, but without that immediate experience, we'll never see it. And we haven't, and, and uh, yeah. So, a student asked Joshu, what is my teacher? And Joshu said, clouds rising out of the mountains, streams entering the valley without a sound. And the student said, well, I'm not asking about those things. And Joshu said, though they are your teacher, you don't recognize them. Thank you for listening. Fifteen minute walking meditation.